Thank you, um, Athletic Director Harton, and thank you, Michael Fitzpatrick. Uh, me and Michael go way back. We were uh, telling stories earlier. Uh, I was in love with his mom, and his mom was in love with me. She was a very, <laughs> she was a very, very special person, and uh, I'll never forget that. Uh, so thank you for allowing me to share with your family. And uh, to President Martin, thank you. Uh, when I first met President Martin, I was like, wow, this guy's really special. I didn't know was it his military background or whether it was his law background. But as I toured the campus today, what an amazing job you've done. So. And thank you to the Board of Trustees uh, for allowing me to be a part of you and being a horrible trustee. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to do better. <laughs> but they just got me doing so many things. And thank you to Jonathan Azu for you know first nominating me for the Board of Trustees. Thank you, Jonathan. I've tried to hire Jonathan about nine times in my life. He keeps saying, I'll never work for you, Lewis. <laughs> Uh, I also want to thank uh, this young man that's to my left, uh, Phil Ferguson. Uh, and some of you have heard that, this story before because um, uh, I was an outstanding athlete in high school. I was an All-American in high school. We broke world records, state records, city records in high school. And then I got hurt. And all of the scholarship offers that I had been offered went away in like a weekend. Because the doctor who looked at me said, your athletic career is over and you'll be lucky if you can walk without a limp. So, you get over it. And that was in March of um, 1974. And so I started looking for jobs at the post office and UPS and the Chicago Transit Authority where we knew most of the successful African Americans sort of worked at that particular time in the city of Chicago. And then a guy by the name of Ed Earhart showed up at my house out of the blue. Uh, and if you know anybody who grew up poor, when somebody says, your mama say come home, you are thinking, did I do something? Did somebody die? And I get home and Coach Earhart is sitting in my living room and he introduces himself and he said, do you know a guy by the name Phil Ferguson? I said, yes, I do. He said, he plays football for Drake? I said, yes, he does. He said, well, he came to my office last week and asked me if I had a scholarship because he knew somebody who needed one. And this is in August of 1974. And he said, I had never heard of you. He said, so I went to the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago Sun-Times, WGN, and he said, I have this folder. And every single person I spoke to said, if you're gonna take a chance on a guy, that's the guy. And because of Phil Ferguson and his being a way maker, looking out for people, I had never talked to him about this. I had never asked him about this. This is how I ended up at Drake University on a full athletic scholarship. So Phil, thank you for that. When I sum up my uh, life, uh, I have on my office in New York, uh, in 24 in letters, the word called growth. I have a, like a fishbowl office and it's up there. And when people pass, they just stop and look at it because no one else has anything, you know, sketched on their office. It's like, hmm, that's interesting. Most people assume that because I'm in charge of revenue for BET, if that's what it means, growth. It doesn't. It means grow your life and change the world. And that's what I've tried to do my whole career. And it started here at Drake University. And um, President Martin, I learned a few things. What team really meant Fitzpatrick? At that particular time, I thought it just meant athletics because I didn't, I didn't know any better. But as I sort of go through life and continue to grow, team is everything. Because you do nothing 
by yourself. Nothing. Whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a corporate executive, whether you are in academics, you do nothing by yourself. You do it with a team. So I decided that I wanted to be a team builder, that I wanted to put people together to create vision and hit goals and objectives. And that's what that growth is about, building teams of people. These two young men who are here today, you see, follow me around. I, uh, I didn't know them a few years ago. I met them at a conference, and they walked up to me and told me that my conference was amazing. They said, but your social media sucks. <laughs> and it wasn't at the end of the conference field. It was like in the middle of the conference. I'm like, you're going to tell me this like as I'm headed to the stage that my comp? <laughs> It's, it's, it's bad, it's, it's really bad. Look, we, we're, we're looking on social media, there's nothing here. I'm like, yeah, I guess get in contact with me later. I, I can't believe you just interrupt me like that. Well, two or three weeks later, we had lunch and I'm like, I like what they're saying and my social media did suck. So they're part of the team and we're taking this journey together. Uh, they're young men who have started a company. They went to college together. They started their company together. And uh, Jonathan, I'm trying to pour into them like people poured into me. So team is everything that you do. It takes a team to do that. And I've realized that in life and I learned that the foundation fits. You know, you, you, you didn't really get into that story about when we went south. Uh, we were in Jackson, Mississippi one time, and uh, the hotel manager was very blatant. He said, you keep that boy in that room, and you don't let him out after dark. And I laughed, but Fitz and Boyd and other members of the team, they were devastated. They were just Devastated. They were so angry because I was laughing. And they said, Lewis, there's nothing funny about that. And in my mind, I'm like, that's his problem. I've already won. That's his problem. I'm not taking on his, his debt. That's his problem. But to see how concerned they were showed how important to me that team went beyond just passing a baton. It was how we felt about one another in the most important times. And to see them shaking, and they were like, well, we're gonna stay in your room. I'm like, oh, you gotta stop, guys. You and I sleeping in all in the same room together. But they're like, you know, we, we're, we're concerned. But that said so much about team to me. The next thing it said was about the importance of diversity. It showed when you bring groups of people together, and I give speeches about this all over the country, colleges are sort of the foundation of what a better world should look like. Because every college in America, they bring people from all walks of life, from all type of communities, from all type of races, now from all different countries. Nobody looks the same, and they don't even believe the same, but they have to get along in this community. And it shows the importance of being able to come from a different walk of life and appreciate another person's different walk of life. To put value on that other person's differences and say it's okay that you are different from me. Back at that time, there were very few black people at Drake, all right? And a lot of people came from small towns and Iowa, Wisconsin. I came from Chicago, so I had a totally different culture and a totally different perspective. But we had to live together, get along together, disagree together. The importance of diverse communities, it makes you grow. We had many conversations, Fitz, at night and on the road, on buses and in SUVs, as you know that athletes do. Serious conversations about culture and family and lifestyle. All of that was part of growth. And when you grow, you become great leaders. 
and I learned leadership here at Drake University. You are responsible for one another. You're responsible for different people. You're responsible for your behavior. You know, we used to go through this thing, I don't want to be a role model. Well, you are. You are because of your position in life. And you take it, you have to be responsible for it. I tell my leadership team, remember, somebody's watching you all the time. They're watching you. They're watching your every move. They're watching every word that you say. Because, not because they're looking to catch you. They're looking to learn something from you. So we have to understand that. And then President Martin, I learned the importance of community. Because I made a lot of friends outside the walls of Drake University. I think Des Moines, Iowa is a great city. And that the residents of Des Moines are great people and that universities like this can't survive without the community engulfing them and being a part of them. It can't survive without the business community welcoming them and really wanting them to grow and be a part of that. It's so important that we understand that their community is our community and our community is their community. So the importance of community. And I also realize the importance of Waymakers. I'm going to leave with this story. We went to a supporter's house. I, guess, I think back then we called them boosters. That's what we call them. They still call them boosters. We went to a booster's house. I had never been to a rich person's house. All right. And I was just in awe of, of his house. I can't think who that was, Fitz, but he had a convertible Mercedes. And uh, I said, hey, man, how you get all of this? <laughs> He chuckled. He said, uh, well, let me ask you this. He said, what are the things that you like to do? And being a smart athlete, I said, uh, I like to party. Uh, I, I like to compete. Uh, I like to travel. And he said, what are the things that you don't like to do? Go to class. <laughs> Go to practice. I don't like those things. He said, okay, now I'm gonna give you the answer. He said, learn to master the things that you don't like to do so it can give you the opportunity to do the things that you love to do. I've kept that advice my whole life. Every time I find something very hard to do, I lean it to it like my life depended on it and try to master it because it has given me the opportunity to do many of the things that I love to do. So to the people here at Drake University, thank you so much for this award. I appreciate your commitment to this school. It is so important to people like me. President Martin, I, your commitment and all the things that you're doing to build this university up and uh, seeing all the things that have happened under your leadership, Thank you for that. Fitz, you my teammate for life, baby. You my, you, you my ride or die. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. If it wasn't for you, it wouldn't be me. Thank you.